the fork was called off. But as of today, what's happening is a lot of what we're seeing, we're seeing some alt rotation. We're seeing a lot of a concerted push into B cash, <clears throat> and that was probably started from the B cash cartel that started it. And then you got all the people chasing, you know, chasing alpha. Um, B cash is or a bit. Um, B cash is getting back to levels it hadn't seen since after the initial release of the of the token when people started dumping it so we'll talk about we'll talk about that just <clears throat> just the dynamics because right now <clears throat> every right now like most of the alts well i wouldn't say most of the alts but yeah quite a few are green today so yeah we're just seeing more of a rotation into the other stuff right now which is fine yeah and then good and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk energy too, okay? So if you want to flip me in, because I think, I think natural gas is is gonna absolutely just rock. I don't know if you've seen the weather reports. You know, two weeks ago they said it was gonna be a mild Thanksgiving, and now they got this bitter, record-breaking cold that's just sitting, and it's gonna sit for the next eight to fourteen days going to wipe out it's going to be bueno You want to fire it up? Yeah. We're live, so... We're live? Yep. Hold on a second here. And for some reason, it's saying yes. the video output is low. I'm not sure why. Do you have memory issues? Nah. And then, um, yeah, I don't see it yet. Do you have the, did you turn on the, uh, okay, I'm going to go public here. Good second, we fired up. Yep, you're good. There we go. Cool. Yep, you're good. There we go. Cool. Uh oh. And when you guys come on, uh, if you guys could just type something in the chat so we know who's there. And then uh, we're going to give everybody about five minutes or so to get started. We're trying something new this week. We're actually trying to start on time. <laughs> it's a problem with Phil. You know, Phil lives in Hawaii, so we're on island time. You know, California is not much better. So when we go to church, 11 o'clock is when people leave the house instead of attending. <laughs> Uh, 
hopefully in two weeks I'll have a different lighting situation that I'm going to be able to uh, get better backlighting. So you just have to deal with this bit of a darkness until I uh, until I can do this. I'm going to actually fill put my my green screen. I'm going to hang it from the ceiling instead of on the wall, and then. Uh, They'll be able to backlight behind it then. And they'll be able to backlight behind me. Yeah, you just need um, what would seem like overkill for light behind the <laughs> camera. It's amazing. People saw how many lumens I have on my face, and it feels like I'm, I'm in a, uh, a cave. You just went quiet. Did I? Yeah. Either that or you're a ventriloquist. Could be a ventriloquist. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Mafale? Your light point's moving. You should be pretty happy. Yeah, light point's doing good. Yeah, the um, I'm pretty excited about the uh, the software, Phil. It, it it's 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 definitely got us out on some at some tops on some of these trades for it, sure. It does a really good job of um, get yeah, getting you out before these big drops and um, like really good. Yeah, I threw on a I threw on a channel thing too. You know, kind of framed it frame the action a little bit. So many things have been stuck in channels for so long, you know? Right. You know, I think, uh, Scott, I think it's 14, I pay $14 a month and I, I use the software. Yeah, see right here, um, Litecoin is going into, it's bounced off a big fib zone which would take it to that target there would be the 70, $71 target. So that's kind of where this would be, this leg would head head to. This uh, breaking breaking above this bearish fib zone is actually really bullish. This old dotted line was kind of like an old long-term trend line that we kind of dipped below during this whole bearish alt time period. But I think that period is now over because you know, we've been just dealing with fork after fork after fork issue, and everyone, you know, the because of that, everybody wants to protect their Bitcoin position. So, but now that that's be, be you know, beyond us or behind us, I should say, um, it's kind of back to, I think, what we're going to see back when we were back in April, May, and uh, the next leg up in a lot of these legitimate alt plays. Yeah, it looks good, and. Uh... Yeah, the channel there is, uh, you know, I have at least looking back last hundred hours, fifty-eight to sixty-six. That's that's a nice trading range, Buffalo. If you like to trade it, you know. So I I uh, I traded one round through. I moved everything over to Ethereum though now because I kind of like the action on that. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you know, it should at least go for that double top there, Phil. So, um, well, so it goes from there. Yeah, we can look at Ethereum. Um, so Ethereum, still waiting for our uh, buy signal to fire on the daily. But as you can see, we're in this uh, consolidation still that we've been in for since, well, basically since the top. That's when they started forming this, this pennant. And that was back in June. So lots of sideways. The thing with ETH is that you know, with so many ICOs, you've just got this constant back and forth sloshing of buying up Ethereum 
and then selling it when people go to ICOs and then the developers want to get their money or whatever and they sell it off. So there's this back and forth sloshing effect. But what we need to see is a concerted, we'd have to see some concerted buy volume come in, break this previous high of 350 and then break out of this pennant. We break out of that pennant, then you're going to start seeing these FIB targets and, you know, come into play. You, uh, you, you type, you, um, there you go. We good? Yeah, we're good. So as we break out of these levels, 350, uh, and then break out of the pennant, the, these other FIB targets that I have, 457 and 520. 520, I've always said we'll probably get there, but it's just it's going to take a lot of work. Yeah, I think what's going to help it too is that I just read a security exchange uh, bulletin that any future U.S.-based ICO is going to be uh, considered a security. So that should slow down the maniacal push for for coins at least in the U.S. and then uh, and then most U.S. guys can't really buy any ICOs that are offshore. So that, that, that'll probably help put a bit under Ethereum too. It should slow it down. It's out of control. Yeah, it's great. I just don't know. I mean, you know, if you think about it, you know, we've always talked about this before. It's going to really be just the. Um, you know, going to be the top eight, and everybody else is going to be gone. You know. Yeah, I think you're going to see a lot not make it through. Um, 2018 would be my guess. I think you're going to see it. You're going to see a, a, you know, kind of a separation of the pack as far as, as far as ICOs go. Cool. Hey Scott, I'll, I'll take care of that after the, um, after the call. Okay, and then. Um, I'll get with Sean on the uh, access to the courses. So I take care of the trading view access. So I'll go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and get you. Uh, make sure you have a username sent to me if you already did that. Then I can go ahead and add you to the uh, to the uh, the system here. And I might do it while we're we're, we're talking here, as long as still has control of the uh, of the screen. So. You guys have any other questions? Phil and I are just bouncing back and forth right now, but uh, I think you know what we're going to try to do today is, you know, finally, you know, I won't speak for Phil, but he'll probably agree with me. I, I'm I'm excited that there's volatility now starting to enter into the crypto market, not just not just Bitcoin, because as traders, that that just represents opportunity for us, and I think we're going to go into 2018. On the stock side, you're starting to see volatility start to creep back in again, especially in the energy market. So, those are the two things that that you know I like to talk about today. And I know Phil will, will spend some time on the cryptos, but he's also been he's also been trading uh, the nat gas side too. And I think uh, oil and uh, natural gas are going to provide some incredible incredible opportunities to make a lot of money in the next two to three months. Yes, so I think, um, Bob, I think what we'll do is, if you want, we could probably just talk about the general crypto, what's going on, and Bcash and that stuff, and then Natty Gas, and the questions, and that's about it, huh? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Yeah, if you want to kick off that, and then I'll chime in, and then I'll flip to Natty Gas, and you can chime in. Okay, all right. Well, so... Basically, this week we've had the the um, fork called off for Segwit 2x, and I think because they just saw that the consensus wasn't there, right? And uh, it was going to be costly because if you took the futures, the the Segwit 2x futures, and you subtracted that from the price of the current um, price of Bitcoin. You know, there was a price difference there of like six thousand plus dollars. So every time you mined a Bitcoin or got your block reward as a miner, you were you were losing that much money trying to mine Segwit. So it was it was a they were facing large losses, aggregate losses, miners combined of upwards of eleven million dollars a day. So to me, it just seemed like that was probably going to be unsustainable if they were going to do it, and. They did what some people thought they would and call it off. I thought maybe what they would do is they'd go ahead and do it, 
just to see if they could get some momentum, but I didn't think it would last more than a week or two before it really started to fall apart. Just a lot of money to, to gamble on um, you succeeding and taking over the economy, because that's essentially what this is about, taking over the economy. Um, so, so you want to explain what economy is to, to the folks? Yeah, so economy, and what I'll do is I will show a chart but economy is essentially what the entire Bitcoin network is, okay? So it's your exchanges, your payment processors, your vendors, anybody that's got anything going online to transact in Bitcoin. And so right now, if you look at the network, the network consists of miners. Miners broadcast their solve the block to the nodes. The nodes are spread across geographically across the globe there's about 10 or 11,000 nodes and those are full nodes um, that receive incoming connections and relay there's other nodes that aren't two-way there's probably way more uh, nodes that aren't two-way um, but majority of that 90 percent of that plus is running the legacy bitcoin um, software so that's the economy and that's what's transacting all the Bitcoin transactions and you know, $200 billion worth of Bitcoin transacting through that. So when these other guys came over or came up with this agreement, see they're trying to, they're trying to scale, this is a scaling issue, okay? So they're trying to figure out a way to scale Bitcoin. And that's where you get into a philosophical debate or the holy war of, of all this. And you know, there's ways to address it if you follow where it started, Satoshi Nakamoto basically was of the mindset that you would find payment channels. That's that was in you can look that up in bitcointalk.org. And so he you know the, the the philosophy was kind of like you have the central reserve currency of Bitcoin. You can use it for large transactions and find payment channels for the smaller stuff. But your store of value, like gold and stuff like that, you know, that's that's a store of value. So it's not not meant for the daily thing. But some people want to try and do both, have it do both. So it's a philosophical thing, um, you know. But that's the thing with decentralized networks. The consensus kind of dictates what happens. So right now, the consensus is dictating that we're continuing with uh, SegWit, and that will speed up transaction times. And the other thing too is fees for the transactions. People are complaining that, you know, if you send a small amount of Bitcoin, it's kind of costly relative to the amount that you're transacting with. If you send larger amounts, it's very cheap. But the, the issue with that is, you, you know, Bitcoin transaction costs haven't really gone up. It's the amount of money that Bitcoin is worth. So that's kind of changed things. So, um, they are working on it though to try and address that. But when you, you know, in Bitcoin terms, the, the fee for transacting hasn't really, isn't that much. But because it's you know, inflated against the dollar so much, that's, you know, now it's kind of skewed. So um, I think you just got to let the consensus do its thing. And that's the beauty of a dis decentralized network. And uh, I think all these issues, all of these issues are going to iron out and, uh, you know, life goes on. But it's an interesting process, so we'll see. We'll yeah. see how it shakes out. But I think ultimately, you know, is something going to happen to Bitcoin? No, it's not going to happen. Um, you have to think too. A lot of people, if you think about just the, if you just look at the the Chicago Mercantile Exchange and what they've done, they they have the smartest guys in the room, right? So they've looked at Bitcoin. They've looked at the architecture. They've looked at how it's being developed and it passed all the tests and they're saying they didn't make they didn't make any other futures they made bitcoin futures they didn't make bcash futures or anything like that so um bcash you, see, you have you have the, the contention is you have these guys who want to do a different scaling issue so they're going to bcash they you know they called off segwit 2x now they're going to bcash and they're pumping bcash the problem with bcash is it started with a very small group and they're pumping it and you don't know when they're going to dump it and they're using it to play hash power games just like we talked about in the in the uh, segwit 2x it's a trap video last week where i 
kind of theorized that Segwit 2X might be a sideshow, and really what's going to happen is they're going to pump Bcash, and here they are. And they're actually pumping it more than I thought they would. But, I, you know, like every other, uh, you know, attack on the core Bitcoin software, and, and keep in mind, too, Bitcoin, the software that we're running has come from what we call Bitcoin Improvement Protocols, or BIPs, right? So that came from back in the days of when it first was released and then they would make bitcoin improvement protocols to change and update the software and adapt and you know scale it and they're coming from a completely different playing field where there is no bip there's just their iteration of what they think needs to be done to scale so it's breaking it's breaking away from the development community of bitcoin so and you and and it's a group of ceos venture capitalists, uh, you know, group of business guys that thought that what they were going to implement was representative of the consensus community, and it's not. It's their vision. So I have a problem with that philosophically. So I think this all sorts itself out, as decentralized networks do, and Bitcoin's not going anywhere, and Bitcoin will scale, and life will go on. With this, with the CME futures, you're basically paving the way for Wall Street to come in and all those institutional money to come in, and they're looking for something to put their dollars in, because there's a storm coming, and it's going to be inflationary because of all of the things that they've done in the last decade, and yeah, they need to find the next Amazon, and Bitcoin is basically a vehicle in a perfect storm to see that thing skyrocket in value over the next 24 months. Yeah, and you know, my view always always on the uh, the altcoins is that it's the only really mechanism that's outside of any central bank's uh, banking system. So, you know, the elites have created a vehicle which they can hop off during that storm and then hop back in once all the devaluations are done and and I think that's that's important for people to understand is that, you know, with the banking system is is that they're going to they're going to um, basically confiscate deposits and and devalue the currency. And if you're in the banking system in any way, shape, or form, you're caught in that vortex. So now, you know, somebody's worth you know a ten million dollars nothing for them to put one or two million dollars over in Bitcoin and um, and ride out the storm and have that go up four to five X and if they get devalued you know half on what's left in the system you know that they're they're still good to go and so you know we're seeing at least in, in you know the, the people that I communicate with Phil and I think you do too is that uh, there's people that have never been in, in the cryptos before that are of high net worth that are really starting to move into it in a big way this year. And now with the CME coming in, it's going to allow all these financial advisors to recommend people to allocate a part portion of their assets over to these uh, instruments. That's right. And, you know, that was a thing too. I mean, a lot of CFAs and stuff like that were like, oh, it's a Ponzi, oh, it's a bubble, this and that. But um, when you have the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, and they don't make future pro uh, products every day, right? A lot of research and thought goes into it. Um, and if they thought that the government was going to squash it, or it just was, it was just going to blow over. This thing was going to just, you know, die out. They wouldn't have touched it. But you got to think, Bitcoin's been in existence for nine years, right? Uh, or eight, eight years, going on nine years, and. Uh, you know, it's taken that long to get established. So it, it's been around. Um, and now it's just starting to get into the global awareness. And even that's really low. It's probably not even 3% yet. So, but what it did was it basically told all those guys, look, we're a huge financial entity. We've been around forever. You know, we control huge portions of the daily uh, stock market volume. And we're making a futures product because this thing is legit. So a lot of those guys that were on Twitter going, oh, it's a Ponzi, blah, blah, blah. You know, that, that just kind of squashed all that. It's also going to allow the funds to hedge positions. There's over 100 funds coming into this space. So you got a lot of institutional flows that are coming in. Now they're going to be able to hedge their 
their positions. Um, these are these are cash settled futures, so it's not going to affect the underlying supply, but it will allow people to like basically take insurance bets against their positions to uh, manage their risk because a lot of these funds have to have certain risk tolerances that they have to adhere to. So it gives them a lot more flexibility, and they usually need a hedging instrument to do that. So um, that's that's a huge green light for uh, for those type of money inflows. And we go. You asked about you know what's the economy. Here's a map of the. These are all the nodes that run Bitcoin, the Bitcoin network. Okay, so nodes relay the transactions throughout the entire Bitcoin ecosystem. The miners solve a block and say, "Hey, we solved the block." The, it, it traverses this whole network, so there's all these nodes. So there's about about over eleven thousand nodes. Ninety plus percent of that runs the legacy Bitcoin uh, software. So that's the economy, right? And uh, so when you have a small group that's trying to pump a coin that didn't come from the consensus, I you know I don't think it's you know basically like every other fork is just going to die out. That's what's going to happen. They're trying. The problem with what the problem I'm having with those guys is that one of them, Roger Ver, he runs Bitcoin.com. Okay, so that, he bought that domain way back, but he's basically saying um, Bcash is Bitcoin. So it's misleading for new people that come in, and they're gonna get they're gonna get bought into this altcoin that you know is in Bitcoin. But he's saying it's Bitcoin. So it's just you know to me that's just being a bad actor and. Uh, it's just not going to work, and it's gonna. It's, it's too bad too because uh, Bitcoin's got a bright future ahead of it, and this is just unnecessary, you know, in the in the growth process. So it's a, you know they're hindering basically what's going to be a really cool product. It's going to be in everybody's world, you know, in the next four to five years. Somebody's going to be dealing with crypto in their life, and uh, they just need to embrace that vision and just roll and kind of just be a more cohesive community. Yeah, hey, 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 Tom. I think I don't think it's as easy as you as you're describing it in the um, in your question because I think Phil put a great video out last week when he talked about the guys that were trying to force the um, they're trying to force the the uh, Segwit two X, and by doing it, they flipped over to that, and but the futures weren't supporting it. So as they're trying to mine to try to get this Segwit two X going. They were leaving money on the table, so I don't think they win, you know, just because they're flipping from one thing to another. There, there's there's definitely opportunity costs to this, and you know, and they're if they're mining coins and holding them, and they flip to another coin, and Bitcoin drops by a thousand dollars, well, they just they just basically wiped out their net worth on that side too, and they don't necessarily own the new coin yet because they're just starting to mine it. So, um, so I think you know it's it's not as easy. They're not sitting back there saying, you know, "Heads I win, tails you lose." You know, they they absolutely there's a cost to this, and and so you know, it's it's it, if they can't drive one of these altcoins, all bitcoins, you know, like but the Bitcoin legacy, then then they're going to go back to the Bitcoin legacy because they're they're just going to run out of. The ability to make money mining it and mining is getting more and more expensive too so i feel you want to add anything to that so there is the game of hash power right so if they can if see if bcash gets enough value they could hash they can mine bcash right and but then the problem is is they're going to want to dump it and because there's a you know they're gonna try and push this bcash thing and stuff like that but at some point it's just not going to pan out and they're gonna dump their bcash there's a lot of bcash that hasn't been dumped yet it's going to dump and so they have um so you basically have this sloshing back and forth and i'm going to show you guys here a little bit of what i'm talking about as far as hash power because if bcash gets a bunch of hash power into it um what will happen is on its next difficulty change, it's going to be more expensive to mine. But if then Bitcoin, because the hash power, let's say a bunch of the Chinese miners switched and went to Bcash to hash, then that takes away hash power from the Bitcoin network. And then the Bitcoin difficulty will drop. And then they'll switch back over to Bitcoin, right? And start mining that. So that becomes an issue of 
mining and mining centralization, why that's bad. But you're having countries, um, Russia and Japan and other countries that are bringing a lot of mining hash power online. So it's ultimately just a growth thing. Um, we're going through growing pains. And I think that once more hash power gets online, the uh, you're going to take away that central that it's not really I wouldn't say it's a centralized hash power right now, but they have a large portion of it over in China. As that decreases, um, a lot of these games will cease to be played, and I think that will happen. It's just going to take um, some time to to play out ultimately. But I was going to show you what they what they do uh, as far as hash power. Um, so let's do this. Okay, so this is the Bitcoin uh, cash hash rate. And over here on this, it's spiked up. Um, and if you look at the Bitcoin hash rate, um, we've kind of that we've come down. And so what's going to happen is now this 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 green line here represents what they estimate the next difficulty to be and difficulty means um, how hard it'll be to solve the blocks, which is basically a cryptographic puzzle. And then that, by doing that, it confirms all the transactions um, that are happening on the network. So when it drops, they'll be able to they'll throw all their mining power back to it, and then they'll be able to mine blocks faster, and it'll be more profitable. So there's, pro there's that game going on. And so, you know, that's, why I'm, that's what I'm saying. It's like they're just... There's this game of, of tr swashing this hash power back and forth, but over time, as the hash power globally starts to distribute, this we won't see this as much. So all I'm saying is this is just kind of shenanigans, and it's going to pass, and uh, I think ultimately Bitcoin Cash gets dumped on, and uh, when life goes on. Hey, Tom asked a question, Phil, about uh, who's spending Bcash. Who's spending it? I don't know who takes big who takes Bitcoin cash nobody yeah who's who was selling it the last here's the thing like if you look at um, bring up a chart here of B cash here's basically what happened okay so B cash if you look let's just look on a daily so they open it dumps came up we told everybody in the room get out here and then everybody over time as they got their bcash dump 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 what they were doing probably was was accumulating it because now when you're down here there isn't really probably that many sellers left so it's easy to bring in some volume and pump it up right um but now it's like once they do that i mean they can't keep doing it. it's going to get very costly so at some point um they're probably going to stop but that's what I mean. It's like people, they're going to create this this momentum. See, people, you know, altcoin traders are going to look at that and they're like, man, I got to get on that because, you know, cryptos are great momentum plays. But I'm just like, you don't know when they're going to go ahead and dump it and it's going to dump. Um, so nobody takes it. There's really no economy. There's not that many nodes. I mean, it, again, it's this is what these guys are all this is the segwit 2x crowd so it's all just games being played um i you know yeah, you can try to play the momentum the problem is you won't know when you're gonna get your face ripped off when they dump it and, and they're gonna do it while we're sleeping yeah so again i think they just they accumulated a bunch of it down here and not and when the selling subsided then they were like okay let's go operation pump but i think it'll be one of the coolest pump and dumps you've ever seen yeah, I'm gonna probably do a little Bitcoin BCH uh, um, shorting if I can. Yeah, I don't think Poloniex has it as a shortable. You might have to go to like yeah, some, you might have to go to like Bitmex or something like that. But I, yeah. the, um, I, it's just amazing this the spike. I mean, it doubled in three days. That's incredible. Yeah. So. But again, again, you know, there was a lot of selling. I'm sure they were watching like how much selling there was, and when it when the volume dropped down, you know, like here, and then they started the op, you know, operation pump. You can see with this volume here, they started coming in. Now they're really hitting it. But we'll see. 
there's still a lot of Bcash on the sidelines. And the other thing is Coinbase never released Bcash to all of their millions of subscribers, right? And if, there, you know, when that comes online, there's going to be more selling. That's going to probably happen in January. So. No, I agree. And, you know, it's Scott, when you're trading in and out of crypto, you have to have your own crypto. Well, you can, you know, if you go into uh, Poloniex, for example, where I am, you know, you, you, you can, your money can sit in what they call the U.S. dollar tether, and then, but you have to put that to work. So, but you can also, you know, they have margin, but you have to have cash to have the margin. So, you know, you're, you're essentially have to own either the tether or a crypto in order for you to trade in and out of, out of the coin. So, um, you can trade one coin against another, but you have to, uh, have capital in, in order to trade. And then for Tom, yeah, I I don't you know at first it did, but you know I'm looking at I'm looking at Litecoin is back up to 63. I'm looking at Ethereum is now back to almost 320. Uh, Ripple's back over 21 again. You have uh, Vertcoin, um, it's still a little soft, but I think Osmogo is is is, is, is the yeah, Osmogo is coming back again too. So it looks like. You know, probably by the end of the weekend, the alts are all moving again. So, the Bcash story might might play itself out here in the next day or two. Well, I, I don't think there's a lot. I don't think there's a lot of. I think there's a there's a concentration of people pumping Bcash, right? I don't think it's a it's as broad as it looks. You know, and Tom, you know about new money. You know, it's. It's it's unclear. I don't I don't know if you know if Phil has a place they see new money coming in, but I, I know Coinbase is opening up accounts like they're going out of style. So I can imagine Kraken and Zappo and and you know Bittrex, all those guys are probably opening up accounts like that people are putting money in, so there is more money coming into the system. Yeah, so if you look at the um, the market cap, you talked asked about money coming in. So yeah, it's it's coming. Waiting for this to re refresh, but yeah, we, we are getting a bump in inflows. So money is coming in. You can see it in the alts too. They're they're mostly green today. Um, we do see that the Bitcoin dominance. So it's you know how much market cap amongst all cryptos does bitcoin have versus everybody else and in the last uh, day or well since since the 6th of november so last week it's kind of jumped up to 62 percent now we're down to about 52 percent so bitcoin cash has spiked up so you know it's that it's that whole pump thing but we're going to start seeing the other alts start to boogie here in a little bit yeah, it's, it's Scott, yeah, you, you can go what's called to a U.S. dollar tether. It's a derivative, but it's not a coin in and of itself. So, so you know, if you, if you think all the coins are going to go down for whatever reason, you can just slide over to the U.S. dollar tether and, and weather it out without taking your money back into the world of fiat. So, and Alfred, of course, everything's printed. That's why Bitcoin and, and, and its ilk are going up because people are looking for something that has scarcity value. So, hey, before we switch over to over to uh, the energy markets real quick, anybody have any more questions or, uh, um, or comments? Um, I will... Then the last thing I'll do is I'll just cover Bitcoin because it's the big dog. Um, we're kind of coming into this trend line here. I'll just talk from a technical aspect. Um, as I was saying, if you've been following me, we were going to break out of this channel, and we did. And now we've returned back to the top of the channel, more or less. We're into this bullish fib zone here, um, which would give us a target of eighty, almost 8,500. Um, this larger range fib zone, if we were to go that far down, which would be 
in this 5,500 to 5,200 range would be that rebound would go take us over up to 9,000. Um, this this for me this pullback's a little interesting because at some point we're going to start seeing diminishing sizes and percentage terms on these pullbacks. Um, so let you know when we get these sort of pullbacks from in the channel top to bottom um, those are like 30 to 40 percent pullbacks I think currently right now we're at about 20 plus percent here and so it'll be interesting to see if if we hold here or if it doesn't get it that deep on the on the pullback percentage wise I think that's a sign that these these corrections are going to start to be less volatile but that being said um, we are entering kind of back into the top of the channel, that trend line. And uh, if we do get more selling pressure, then I think what we're probably looking at is probably this range here, this 5,500 to 50, 5,300 to 5,500 is definitely not out of the question. And I don't really think it's going to dump below that. And then off to the races, but could hold here. We'll see. We'll see after, uh, you know, Bitcoin Cash has a hard fork coming because their developer team kind of sucks and they had to redo the code because the difficulty mechanism was all screwed up. And so they're going to do a hard fork. Normally hard forks result in, a, in two chains, but I don't think they're going to, I think because they're such a small community, they're just all going to hard fork and nobody's going to mine like the old Bitcoin Cash fork. So... I don't think you're going to see an airdrop like you usually do with a hard fork with Bitcoin. Um, and after that's done, um, I kind of suspect we might see some selling of Bcash. We'll see. But yeah, don't really want to be in Bcash after it's pumped, you know, 150% or something like that. You just never know when they're going to dump. So, and they will dump it. Yeah, and it's probably going to be bidless too. So, you know, you know, I came from the M&A world, and sometimes you, you, you spin off a piece of junk, and you throw all the bad assets in there, and then you, you let it just die, and and that's kind of how I think we view Bcash is, is that it's just gonna it's gonna be orphaned, and um, and people are gonna try to get out of it and salvage whatever value they can. So it's it's you know you always stay with the gold standard, and then Alfred, I, I know you asked this question a couple times. I mean, nobody knows the future really around these cryptocurrencies. I, I think the the play is it's not really the end of the crypto. It's really going to be the end of the fiat or the uh, or the leveraged banking systems. So I think these coins are going to provide what they call you know, what they call uh, purchasing parity, and and so its value is going to be whatever that's going to be required to keep people's uh, purchasing power. You know, intact as it is today. So, you know, it's really the fiat currency. We just have no idea. You know, I mean, tomorrow, you know, in 1933, I think it was, you know, they confiscated gold and repriced the dollar in gold. And you know, and, and you're going to see that with a lot of these uh, these fiats. They're just simply going to reprice it. They're going to probably have you know debt jubilees and and and. The, the coins are really going to be sitting there saying, "Hey, if, if you know, if one Bitcoin could could buy a, a um, you know, a, a really nice car, you know, as an example, after it's all over, the, the price of the Bitcoin is still going to be able to buy a really nice car, kind of a thing, just like gold. You know, an ounce of gold can buy a really nice suit. It, it's going to be in the same kind of you know, uh, uh, relative purchasing power. So, and." Um, so you know, that's that's my view of it, and 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 just because it's not, it, it can only be leveraged two to one, and and I agree with with Phil. If they're going to settle cash on the futures exchange, it's actually going to help Bitcoin because these derivatives are going to blow up, and people are going to want to own the real coin. So any kind of leverage that they try to force into the system is actually going to backfire on them. Because the people that own these coins learn from what happened with gold, and I don't, and they're not going to, they have no reason to give up their their physical Bitcoin. If you if if you can if you can torture that analogy on a digital coin, 
you know, they won't have to give it up. And so I think any any kind of leverage these these derivatives from the exchange are going to cause are going to cause some massive squeezes in in the in the scramble to get a whole real real you know Bitcoin or whatever altcoin is out there. But Bitcoin first because that's what's going to be uh, that's going to what's going to be on offer. So hey Tom, no problem. You know it's good to have somebody else jumping in. You know uh, that's why we do this so people can can talk and and. A lot of people have really good ideas. We don't, you know, we don't pretend to know everything or, or think through everything. So, it's good to get the the, the questions and the challenges. Um, somebody asked about Lisk. Now, Lisk has um, Lisk as an altcoin has legs. It can be, you know, one of those that could be around for a while. Um, technically speaking, I think like most coins, we're seeing kind of a bottom here. And uh, technically speaking, it would probably see some resistance up into this 12 to 13 area in Bitcoin terms. Um, it needs to clear this tr this neckline though here, if it's gonna, because what it's doing is it looks like it's putting in a inverted head and shoulders here. And so what happens is that you want to clear the neckline if that happens, which is that. Um, and so if you, once that happens, then that you can almost certainly expect it to go into there. Once it hits into this area, I would expect a pullback, maybe down back to this level, and then try and see if it busts higher. But that's where some of these moves are a given, and then beyond that, it gets a little bit more tricky because now you're talking about you know longer term in um, money flows into these things, and that's where people that's where that's where we're going to start seeing other coins start growing and leaving other coins in the dust. So. A lot of these short-term moves are pretty no-brainer, but beyond that, that's where that's where you better have a very good product as far as an altcoin goes to see that sustained growth into 2018. Yeah, hey, hey Scott. I mean, uh, Phil, I'll let you ask answer Scott's question. Uh, I know, Matt, Matt Flay, that's what I said too. Uh, I like Litecoin, but uh, Phil, if, if somebody says, "Hey, I want to start out. What coin should I start buying first? If, if I'm going to start buying right now?" Well, you know, obviously Bitcoin's the big dog and it has some pretty high valuations to come. That being said, are there other coins? You have to look at where we're at in, in our, you know, point in time. So right now we're coming off of a very, uh, fairly prolonged bear market for alts. Um, if we look at, if you look, because a lot of alts transact in Bitcoin terms, right? So if we look at, say... Let's look at uh, let's look at Neo for example. Neo is kind of like the Chinese Ethereum. Okay, so topped out in August, and it's just been kind of all downhill since. And especially be pre fork, you know, ahead of the forks and stuff, really, you know, just moving down. So, you know, this was a long term trend line that it was really money to. If it ever came down to this trend line, you could buy it, and it was a really good spot to get in. We broke that, so probably going to head back up here. But now, if you're talking about in percentage terms, you know, from the bottom here to up in here, you're looking at a hundred percent gain. And um, will that happen before Bitcoin sees another hundred percent gain? That would take Bitcoin over to ten thousand, um, probably. But then you have to start looking at that's why with all coins you have to take profits um because bitcoin's velocity is so big um it's going to be hard for some of these coins to keep up but there definitely are plays to be had where you can see you know 100 percent gains in bitcoin terms and that's a great way to grow grow your portfolio in bitcoin terms um yeah and phil you said something to be pretty profound when i started trading it too is that you trade the altcoins so that you can build a bigger Bitcoin stack. So you know you 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 know Bitcoin's kind of like your fortress, and then you run out and 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 you grab a couple couple dollars of profit, and then you roll it back in and you, and you keep stacking your Bitcoin. I think I think that's a great analogy. And I remember you were talking to me the other day where you're saying because it's the Bitcoin economy that the more these altcoins move, they have to move against the Bitcoin you know, uh, economy so that Bitcoin's always moving up higher, at, you know, as these like, as these altcoins pop and, and, re and, and recede, 
Bitcoin just keeps growing because it's the base for everything grown from that. Do you want to explain to that really quick? Yeah, I mean, so, okay, so Bitcoin, you have to think, I mean, if you just look at the growth, let's look at it from a Bitcoin growth perspective, okay, because, so we've seen, you know, Bitcoin at the beginning of the year, if we go back to the beginning of the year, which is here, 2017, it was a thousand, thousand plus dollars, okay, so now we're at, we, we almost hit 8,000. It's an 800% move just about. And now we're doing one of our pullbacks to 6,300 or whatever. That's just perfectly normal. So that gives us kind of a clue. And we're not even, the party hasn't even gotten started yet. Not even 3%. I would say maybe over 2% of the population maybe has has Bitcoin awareness. And that's, you know, with network effect, that grows exponentially. So it took eight years to get to 1% uh, or 1.5% approaching two percent it'll take probably a year for you know that to go from two to three percent and then you know keeps having over time then you have this exponential growth of awareness so think about that like the globe in reality for all intents and purposes the globe hasn't really heard of bitcoin even though you see it in the news and if you're aware of bitcoin it seems like everybody's talking about it but a lot of people don't or they might have heard about it so then that gets us into this you know growth trajectory so we're looking at coinbase which only goes back so far because but you know here was a you know you look at that growth trajectory here that's pretty good right you're going from like 200 to to a oh, thousand that's that's great then all of a sudden it just changes directory starts cranking upwards so now we're on this trajectory and if more people are getting into it it only actually makes more sense that the tra trajectory would actually steepen, but say it didn't say we just stayed on this trajectory. That's taking us to, if we even go out to like, say to 2019, 2019, that takes us to a hundred thousand dollars of Bitcoin. And if you're thinking no way, that's not possible. You're not understanding the, the, the unique supply issue at Bitcoin. You know, there's only uh, 1800 can be mined per day. And uh, there's, it's just a very, very, very finite amount. So, yeah, it is possible to see those valuations. I think 2018 is the year you're going you're gonna to see a lot of money flow into the crypto space as a whole. But Bitcoin is going to be the top dog. So with that in mind, <clears throat> you then have to think, well, is the altcoin I'm in going to have that kind of growth trajectory? On a sustained long-term level, I think precious few will. So that's why I say when you're in altcoins, you want to make sure that you're getting, taking profits when, when they are having a good run against Bitcoin. But ultimately, at the end of the day, and like we've seen in the last couple months, that you're going to go through periods where they don't, and it's just impossible to keep up. So, you know, when you're, when you're up, take your profits, and if we're starting to see a pullback in alts, then you, you know you wait, and then you wait for a bottom, like we've seen now. We've seen a bottom across the board on big, on altcoins, and now you can start looking at the ones that are, you know, the real growth plays. <clears throat> and that's what we do in the room. You know, we've got, we got ones that we look at, we identify that are not going to be gone next year, that they're going to grow, and they have a good chance of growing in Bitcoin terms. And you get that right, then you can really start building up your Bitcoin and get into Bitcoin at a cheaper entry level because you're getting into a alt that's a you know more affordable but then it grows in bitcoin terms and uh you can build up your bitcoin that way yeah hey christoph um the um i mean not, uh, i mean ron um the thing about the irs demanding the coinbase records you know it, it it's it's gonna be problematic for the irs because if you think about it you know assuming that you know one should pay for any kind of a gain in um, uh, in, in a securities is that I think I think for the next number of years there's going to be an argument over uh, is it a is it a is it a currency or is it a security number one number two is I don't need any of my money in Coinbase so all it's showing on my records is that I'm buying in Coinbase and then I move that those those coins I move to another exchange and so what's the IRS going to do with that information other than knowing okay that somebody bought 
ten thousand Bitcoin. You know, the, you know, the IRS can only demand payment from a gain, and you know, if it stays inside the uh, inside the economy itself, how, how are they going to prove any kind of gain or loss? So it's going to be a mess for them to, to sort out. And I think the only way they're going to get to it is is that they're only going to be really be able to probably tax it at the exit ramps. You know, when somebody goes from Coinbase back to Fiat or Kraken or wherever, wherever the you know the exchanges that that will transfer to Fiat, that's the only way they're going to be able to show there's going to be you know gains. And the other thing is, is people are going to say, look, I own a dollar. You know, if if, if the euro crashes and my dollar has twice the purchasing power. Do I pay tax on the dollar that I own? So it's really going to be an incredible legal battle to figure out what they really have on their hands here because they have these things have implications for them. Is it a security? Then there's certain things they can't do. Is it a currency? Then there's other things they can't do. So it's going to be a, it's going to be really interesting because if they want to call it you know um, a security. You know then then um, they're they're going to have to track. You know what is a buy sell on that because it's it's staying inside of a uh, the crypto economy. Is it does it just stay in there like a ETF and then until it drops off? I don't know. And, and Phil, they had a question. Somebody asked, "What do you think Bitcoin Gold? What do you think is going to happen?" So, uh, do you want to address that real quick before we shift gears? Bitcoin Gold. Yeah. Dump it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That, um, that, here's does, a, that help, does that help you, Tom? Here's a okay to 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 um, well, I mean to talk about that a little bit. So Bitcoin Gold did what's called a snapshot fork, and a snapshot fork is different. It's a hard fork, but what they do is they take a snapshot from back. I think it was October twenty third, and they're gonna grow. They're gonna build on top of that. So it's gonna be like um, I don't know. A thousand blocks behind the current uh, chain or whatever and uh, so whatever you had in possession whether it's on an exchange in an exchange wallet or in one of your wallets that you own whether it's uh, like an exodus wallet or treasure or ledger one of those hardware wallets whatever you had at that time you get allocated Bitcoin gold on the Bitcoin gold um, blockchain um, whether or not the wallets will or exchanges for that matter support it is up to them so you have to kind of inquire with your wallet provider or exchange provider if they're going to support um, Bitcoin gold they are releasing the software tomorrow and um, I haven't <clears throat> I haven't really seen anything from anybody other than we're reviewing when we get the software or the code we'll review it and see how we can implement it if we can implement it so but I, it's another fork. It's just going to be another altcoin idea. But again, you know, we're interested in stuff that's going to be around a while. These different iterations of Bitcoin, um, that's cool. But I think we've got other things that have been around longer that are going to have a better foothold and stuff like that. So I just don't think Bitcoin Gold's just going to... I think it's one of those things that might be around for a while and people might trade it around. But as far as actually doing anything, I think that's prob that's not probable. So... Whatever, I'm not really, you know, if I get some, I'm probably just, you know, you could hold it and see what happens, but I'll probably, you know, kind of, if Bitcoin looks like it's poised to run higher, I'm dumping it. I'm going to go put it and convert it to dip, uh, Bitcoin. And uh, so that's my take on it. Cool. So, hey, so Phil, let me, um, if you mind giving me, uh, for me to take control here, I'll, uh, I'm going to show you some energy things here for the last couple of minutes we have. Yep. Um, let me switch over to Bob's screen. And let me know where you're there. All right, so go ahead and uh, share your screen. Okay, give me a sec here. I'm like Bob's mini-me. Yeah, I'm trying to... One million dollars. <laughs> Where's the show screen? Come on. Okay, no. Yeah, show sure. screen. They put it in a weird place, you know? Good. 
All right. Am I showing here? Let's see. Yep, you're good to go. Okay. <laughs> so I just looked up. I saw the delay on the mini me. So here's the um, here's natural gas and and um, ignore the arrows. I mean they're they're nice for the daily, but I don't use them for daily. But they uh, they're just showing when money flow is starting to flow in. But last week I was telling people that. You know, natural gas is going to get a huge, a huge move higher. And at the time, this volatility line here, this green line that you see, was bumping up against this. Let me change the drawing, sorry. Um, it was... Uh, It was bumping up against this this line down here, and everybody was talking about natural gas going to 250. But we're going into La Nina year, and with the La Nina year, it, it definitely spikes natural gas. And now there's a special kind of La Nina year. The way the way the uh, ENSO is broken out across the Pacific, it's like one, two, three, and four as they look across the Eastern Pacific. The ratio of the um, where the cold is, is 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 telling us that the eastern and midwest United States are going to absolutely go frigid. And two weeks ago, people were talking about a really, really balmy uh, November in the east coast. So they were driving the price down, but the volume was 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 getting really interesting. And and I said, said look, we're going to get a big push here. So. You know, we started recommending getting into natural gas, and then we had this trend line here. This is a, basically a falling wedge, and it ripped right up to here. And then once it touched this, and I went ahead and did a this is a channel, and we we went ahead and we touched the channel on Friday. Now I went to to cash on it because I just didn't want to hold it over the weekend. But the weather reports coming out over the weekend are are absolutely um, bullish for natural gas. They're talking. The frigid temperatures hanging for another two weeks. So my view is is that if we get lucky and we get this thing pulled back to around 315 or or worst case you know 310 is is buy 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 because the next move on this is is right here in the 340s and then the 360s and then if you look out if you look at the dogs are going to bark in a second. My wife's coming home. I hear the garage door is. <laughs> The um, the next move here is going to be up to um, right here, and then and then we're going to go all the way up to here. And and if you look at 2013 and 2014 as analogies, because that's what they're settling on, uh, natural gas went to six dollars, and and storage has been down, so they're they've been underplaying this. So I think there's going to be a tremendous opportunity for natural gas to absolutely explode. So my recommendation to anybody who's listening is that, you know, I have some non-leveraged natural gas SCG. Uh, I'm going to go leveraged again. I was hoping for a bit of a pullback. And if I get it, that's great. If not, if it jumps over this, this trend line, then then we're going to here and we're going to here. And then I'm going to load back up leveraged again for the ride because what's going to happen is, is people are going to try to start shorting into this in December and January to anticipate the spring, but the winter is going to be colder than and longer than people anticipate, and that's going to rocket natural gas, absolutely rocket it. So that's that on that side. And then if you go to oil, um, this is the weekly on oil, this is incredible. Um, so we have a You know, people are talking about oil being bearish, and you look at a weekly chart of oil. I don't know. Somebody tell me that that looks bearish to them. <laughs> to me, that looks like a rounded bottom, and for the potential explosion to 64, then to 80, and then to 91, depending on what's going on here. I think, I think we're setting ourselves up now. It doesn't mean next week we can't pull back down, even get you know next couple weeks even into the low 50s. But what I'm saying is that people are thinking we're going to go back down to these levels again are not going to happen. You know, I think uh, the, the geopolitical risk is 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 
taking hold. There was another terrorist attack in Bahrain today, blew up the gas pipeline between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. They blame the Iranians for that. Storage is low. And then the other thing, too, this, this low here, this was an Obama low trying to force Russia, you know, into submission. And Trump's not playing that game. In fact, Trump wants higher oil prices because it's going to help our domestic export markets and, and balance of payments. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this thing rocket. And, and you're going to see energy is going through the roof. So anyway, I wanted to talk about that. And and uh, I didn't I didn't hang up, did I, Phil? No, you're good. Okay, good. So I don't know if anybody had any questions on that, but but I think uh, you know between cryptos and energy, you know, natural gas and oil, there's there's plenty of ways for us to make a lot of money in the next 90 days. And then once we get past the December Federal Reserve rate hike, Kabuki dance, then the metals and miners are going to fly too. So. So here, you know, that's kind of where we're, um, that's kind of where, where we're thinking of, at least on the trade genius side. So anyway, you want, if you want to add anything, I feel you're, you're welcome. Uh, if not, if people have any final questions before we wrap up. Um, yeah, if anybody has uh, any last minute uh, crypto questions or anything like that, um, we can do a little Q&A. Other than that, um, it's pretty much it for now. We're good. Okay. Anything you guys want us to talk about in the future or just kind of stay with our uh, plan here? Okay, Phil, I think we're good. Yep. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody for listening. Have a great day. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Take care.